Hi, my name is Jenny Holmqvist and uh, a warm welcome to this uh, second webinar relating to the new information requirements in REACH for nanoforms. We had one already last year and based on the submissions that we have got as a result of this new information requirement, we thought it would be a good idea to have a second one and share some of the lessons learned from our side uh, on these one and a half, two months into the, into the new information requirements entered into force. As I already said, from January this year, there are new information requirements on nanoforms that are put on the EU market. These information requirements is a result of a long discussion at EU level. And as of this year, they actually have to also be complied with by companies. That means that if you have nanoforms that falls within the scope of reach of substances, you have to update your existing dossiers to be compliant with these new information requirements. What you can expect from today is that, as I said in the beginning, we would like to share some of the observations that we have got through the first nearly two months uh, of submissions as a result of the new legal information requirements for nanos. Uh, we will look into a little bit what we mean by completeness of data, what our expectations are and what we have seen from those companies who have already submitted updates of registration dossiers. And just as last time, we will also have an, a Q&A session that is already ongoing. And as last time, we strongly encourage you to send your comments uh, through the webinar uh, on the content of, of, of the presentations. And we are here to help. Uh, many colleagues are sitting backstage already now waiting for your questions. If you look into the agenda, uh, I will give some general observations to start with and then followed on with some more practical advice by my colleague Abdel Sumrain. And then I will come back with some conclusions and uh, the webinar will continue to be open for questions also after the presentation has been completed. As I said earlier in the, in the presentation here, we have a Q&A panel available to answer your questions. And if you look at the window you have in front of you, those questions can be uh, asked in the, in the in the little square uh, to your right down corner. And if you have also difficulties hearing or seeing the webinar, you can also use this function to communicate this to us. You can send your questions at any time during the webinar, uh, if you have questions on the slides, but of course also questions that might not be addressed today, we are also of course happy to answer those. If your questions are not able to be answered today, uh, because of time constraints or any other issues, you can also send them to us through our help desk uh, and the link is on the slide and we will answer them uh, in that, uh, through that channel. So let me start by sharing some more general observations that we have seen since January the 1st. So let's go back to why we are here. The new information requirements for nanomaterials uh, in the reach annexes entered into force 1st of January. This concerns all registrations for substances with nanoform in the scope of reach. And it also means that you will have to submit new updates or registration dossiers in the later version of Euclid to allow for the new fields in Euclid to better structure the information that's submitted to us. Since 1st of November last year, we started to already get some updates of dossiers covering nanoform. And as of 1st of January this year, import and manufacture of nanoforms of substances is no longer compliant with REACH without a valid registration for these forms. And in addition, we have also tried to estimate internally through the Nanomaterial Observatory how many substances are likely to be on the EU market in nanoforms. The estimate is, has been based on different data sources, such as the cosmetic regulation, uh, member states' national uh, initiatives, and also other, for example, the impact assessment that was made prior to these amendments or new information requirement entered into force. Based on all of this, we have estimated that around 300 substances have nanoforms on the EU market. Based on this figure, we have also seen a much lower rate of updates than we anticipated. 
To register a nanoform or set a nanoform of a substance, you must submit your dossier in the later Euclid format, meaning 6.4 or newer. You must also explicitly indicate in 1.2 of the dossier the legal entity composition for the nanoform in the state and field form field. Not valid registrations for nanoform are those where you have attached, uh, made an attachment or remarks indicating manufacture or importing of substances at nanoforms, or when dossiers and updates have been submitted in all the Euclid versions. If your submission fails the completeness check, you are, not, you are giving one more attempt within a deadline of four months to submit an update. If your uh, dossier is submitted within that deadline, is considered uh, compliant with the first submission date. If you are not uh, succeeding or complete with the second attempt, your submission is rejected. Submissions to register nanoform before the 1st of January 2020 are considered as registered while the completeness check is pending. Rejection of a completeness or of an update means that the new information is not added to the ECA database. For existing registration, the registration number is not revoked. But it covers only the information that was in the dossier that passed the completeness check. If you're updating your bulk registration to cover nanoform, then the nanoforms are only covered once the new submission passes the completeness check. After rejection, kindly amend the aspects that was not that was considered incomplete and prepare a new submission without delay to comply with reach. There can only be one dossier for a given substance by the same registrant, meaning you cannot submit a new registration dossier to cover nanoforms of an existing substance that are already registered under reach. If you have an existing registration covering the bulk form of a substance, update your that dossier by adding the information concerning the nanoform or forms of the substance that you manufacture or import. This can be done either by reporting your nanoforms individually or by reporting them as sets covering several nanoforms at the same time. Joint submissions, um, according to Article 11.1, .1, information set out in Annex 7 to 10 is submitted normally by first by the lead registrant. Uh, information required by in Annex 6, meaning the characterization and identification of the substance, uh, are covered or submitted separately by each registrant. When existing registrations are updated to cover nanoform, the submis submission sequence is not enforced. And this means that compared to traditionally where the lead submits first, here that is not respected. So also the members can submit before the lead. This means that members can send before the lead and when a member is submitting their update they will receive a disclaimer from us saying that the completeness check decision that they receive from us only covers the Annex 6 meaning the characterization and substance ID of the nanoforms. Thank you very much and uh, I hope you found these general information uh, observations useful. So, hello everyone, my name is Abdel Samrain and I will be giving you today some practical advice on how to fill your dossiers for uh, substances covering nanoforms based on the information that we have uh, seen from dossiers submitted so far. I'll give you uh, advice uh, on a number of different areas starting first with uh, the construction of sets of nanoforms. So, it is useful to recap uh, a bit some of the basic principles on uh, registering forms and nanoforms, uh, nanoforms of uh, substances uh, in uh, REACH dossiers. In principle, uh, each nanoform, uh, according to the regulation, has to be reported separately, uh, including a characterization of that particular nanoform using uh, the requirements in Annex 6 of the regulation. 
and you also have to report information on the properties of that individual nanoform uh, according to the requirements of annexes 7 through 10 of the regulation. However, the regulation does allow you to report information on a set, a set of similar nanoforms uh, when you can fulfill two important conditions. And the first of those conditions is that you have to have uh, clearly defined boundaries of your sets in terms of the characterization parameters of those nanoforms which are forming part of the set. The second condition that you have to fulfill is that you may have to make sure that you justify that the hazard, exposure, and risk assessment of the nanoforms within the set can be done jointly. So please keep those principles in mind when you are constructing sets of nanoforms. Now, I'll give you some observations from the dossiers that we have received so far that you should take into account in constructing your own uh, sets of nanoforms. First of all, uh, we have seen that uh, based on the dossiers that have come in so far, uh, the approach to register nanoforms using a set of similar nanoforms seems to have been used by around half the uh, dossiers uh, that are being submitted. Um, we notice that uh, sometimes the characteristics, the characterizers that are being reported for the set of nanoforms might not be realistic. And an example of this is reporting a particle size distribution of 1 to 100 nanometers for your D10, your D50, and D90 values, meaning that you are reporting that 10% of my particles are between 1 and 100 nanometers, 50% of the particles are between 1 and 100 nanometers, and 90% of the particles also have the same size range, which seems uh, not realistic uh, as a boundary composition. Then we have noticed another important thing that sometimes justifications are not addressing the points that are requested in the Euclid template for reporting justifications. And instead, uh, some of the justifications are only giving an opinion or a strategy, but without giving any scientific evidence to support that particular opinion. And you have to remember that the justifications that you submit are manually verified at the completeness check level. And we have seen so far that about 50% of these justifications pass uh, and 50% are failing at the completeness check. And the tips that we'll give you here might help you uh, increase the chance of passing uh, in this check. So uh, first, make sure that you are reporting real boundaries for your characterizers. And these boundaries should describe the smallest and the largest values for your nanoforms in that particular set for that particular characterizer. Another important thing to do is to make sure that you justify that each nanoform in the set can rely on the same Annex 7 to 10 information for each endpoint uh, that is required. Now, you need to make sure, and this is very important, that you support each statement in your justification by reference to relevant data that can then be tracked or found in your Euclid dossier. So that could include hazard uh, studies uh, or literature studies, but it is important that it is found then in your uh, dossier. Some further advice on this. If you want to make sure that you have a comprehensive uh, justification, uh, you need to give evidence that the hazard profile of the different nanoforms within the set is the same, it is unchanged. And you can do this by making sure that the data representing these nanoforms covers these different areas. So you have coverage of 
the smallest and largest uh, uh, d50 values of your particle size and of your surface area within your test data. You have coverage of the different crystal structures and shapes that are included within your set of nanoforms. Uh, you make sure that uh, the uh, surface treatments that are inducing the lowest and highest impacts on uh, the hazard assessment are addressed uh, within the data. And very importantly, where you have a hazardous surface treating agent present as such in the nanoform that you have information uh, addressing this. Uh, some further advice on creation of your sets of nanoforms. If you are registering your set, your nanoforms using a set uh, of similar nanoforms that have been agreed at the level of the joint submission and is covered with a joint set of uh, data covering the Annex 7 through 10 information requirements, then uh, make sure that you provide the same justification for the set uh, as the justification provided by other re registrants relying on the same set of nanoforms. And this is because the principle of the set of nanoforms is that all the members of that particular set should uh, have the same uh, hazard uh, risk and exposure assessment. So it makes sense that the justification uh, for all members of the set is the same. If you have a diverging justification, this uh, might suggest that the set itself uh, has not been agreed jointly, and it might put into doubt the use of the uh, joint set of hazard data for that set. I will give some additional advice here on uh, things not to do when uh, creating a set of nanoforms. So your uh, justification for your set of nanoforms might be considered incomplete if you do some of the following things. So if you give an explanation of why you have decided to set, use a, a set of nanoforms approach instead of registering nanoforms, and you don't give a, a justification that the hazard assessment and the risk and exposure assessment can be done jointly, then your justification may be incomplete. If you are giving an argument saying that the characterizers of the different nanoforms are overlapping and therefore it is not possible to register separate nanoforms, this kind of argument will be considered an incomplete justification for the set. If you are making a simple statement saying that there is no difference in the uh, ecotoxicological or toxicological profiles of the nanoforms in the set, and you don't back that with any kind of justification or data, then that would be considered incomplete. And then if you are giving reference to data on nanomaterials in general, but not for the specific nanomaterial, uh, the specific substance that you are registering uh, in your dossier this would not pass. Now I'll switch a little bit here and give you some advice on reporting compositions of uh, your substance, of your nanoforms and sets of nanoforms. So if you recall in Euclid section 1.2, you can have different types of compositions. You have to have a legal entity composition in section 1.2 that is describing uh, your own manufactured or imported compositions and forms. But you also have this boundary composition and this boundary composition is describing the compositions and forms that are covered by the hazard data and the assessment. So that is covered by your uh, robust study summaries for the Annex 7 through uh, 10 information requirements as reported in the endpoint study records in Euclid sections 4 through 7. Uh, the classification and labeling in Euclid section 2.1 and the PBT and hazard assessment conclusions 
in Euclid sections 2.3, section 6, and the section 7 endpoint summaries. You can have uh, different compositions uh, reported uh, in your dossier. Each nanoform or set of nanoforms has to be reported separately, including the Annex 6 characterization and the Annex uh, 7 through 10 information requirements on uh, the hazardous properties of uh, those nanoforms or sets of nanoforms. It is important that you make a link between the legal entity composition that you report to the boundary composition in Euclid to make sure that you demonstrate uh, coverage of those compositions by the data that is reported. And you can do this in one of two ways. One is you can use uh, the field called related composition in Euclid to create an electronic link from the legal entity composition to the boundary composition when both are present in the same dossier. So in the case of a, a joint submission uh, lead dossier or then a joint submission member opting out uh, from uh, the lead. You can also use the field uh, called reference to related compositions to create a textual link uh, from the legal entity composition to the related boundary composition name when the boundary composition is in a different dossier. So uh, when it is, for example, in a joint submission member dossier. And I'll use the next slides to illustrate uh, these linking in a bit more detail. So first of all, when you are talking about linking compositions, uh, make sure that you are uh, reporting the boundary compositions and the legal entity specific compositions using a consistent uh, nomenclature in Euclid. And we can use the example uh, that you see below. So suppose you are creating sets that are uh, have these following characteristics. You have a set with a crystal structure, cubic crystal structure with a particle size of 20 to 40 nanometers and a surface treatment let's call it a surface treating agent number one. You can create a numerical uh, identifier for this using uh, the following uh, kind of nomenclature. For example, you could take C for cubic, uh, add 20 to 40 for the particle size distribution of that particular uh, set, and dot one to represent uh, the surface treating agent covered by that particular set. This is only an example of a, a nomenclature that you can apply, but you can develop your own uh, way uh, of naming these sets as long as it is used consistently throughout uh, the dossier. Once you have created this kind of nomenclature, you can then report it in uh, the composition sections in your Euclid dossier, as you can see in the image on the left hand side. Once you have done this, then you can go on to create an electronic link between your boundary composition and the legal entity specific composition in Euclid. So uh, looking again at the uh, compositions that you have created in the image on the left, uh, you can see the boundary compositions marked by BC followed by uh, the name of the set and the legal entity composition marked LE and the name of the set. You can create an electronic link in under your legal entity composition by going to the related composition field, which you see uh, in that image on the right hand side and uh, adding a link there to the boundary composition set of the same uh, name. Now I'll go on to give you some uh, advice on uh, the uh, Annex 7 through 10 information uh, that you should report in your dossier. So again, let's recap. Uh, you uh, have to report for each nanoform or a set of nanoforms, uh, you have to report them separately, including the Annex 7, uh, Annex 6 characterization and the Annex 7 through 10 information on the properties of those nanoforms. 
you have to make sure that every endpoint of each nanoform or a set of nanoforms, uh, you will submit uh, some information to make sure that you fulfill that particular uh, information requirement. And the information you submit can take one of three different forms. One, you can provide information uh, on studies done on the specific nanoform uh, or members of the specific set that you are addressing. An alternative is you can give information on other nanoforms of the same substance or other members of a different set uh, of the same substance accompanied by an endpoint specific justification to why this particular uh, information can be used for assessing the nanoform uh, in question. And this is uh, doing a, a read across according to Annex uh, 11 1 1.5 of the regulation. So you have to treat it also as a read across and accompanied with the necessary justifications for why you can do such a read across. And the third option is to use other uh, relevant adaptations as indicated in Annex 11 of the REACH regulation or in column two of the relevant information requirement. Now, it is critical that you create a link between the uh, Annex 7 through uh, 10 information to the related nanoforms or set of nanoforms in Euclid to demonstrate that uh, the information requirements were fulfilled. And you can do this in one of two ways. One is to use the concept of the assessment entity that is found in Euclid section 1.10. And this creates a link between uh, the compositions in section 1.2 of your Euclid dossier to the information in section four through seven, which are the endpoint study records using something called an endpoint summary. And you can see more information about how to do this in uh, Annex 5 of the manual called How to Prepare Registration and PPOR Dossiers. An alternative way to using the assessment entity approach is a naming of the Euclid uh, records in question uh, by referring to nanoforms and sets of nanoforms with a consistent alphanumerical combination to allow people then to see that this particular endpoint uh, record refers to this particular uh, uh, set uh, of nanoforms or individual nanoforms. Now, there's two different ways to link uh, the data depending on whether you are a lead registrant or a member dossier. So if you are a lead registrant uh, who is submitting information uh, on behalf of other registrants, you should create an electronic link between the composition and the data set that you have in your dossier using the assessment entity uh, concept in Euclid. And if you are a member dossier, then you cannot create this kind of electronic link, but you can use a, a consistent naming convention to link your specific composition to those reported in the lead dossier. And I'll illustrate this a bit in the next slides. So again, uh, the lead dossier can create this electronic uh, link using uh, the assessment entity concept in Euclid. You will start with the uh, set boundary composition. You will then create this assessment entity and create a link to that. And then you will link your particular assessment entity to the endpoint summary for each particular endpoint. From the endpoint summary, you can create a link to the endpoint study records in question. And finally, you can even create a link between the endpoint study record and the test material uh, in question. And with this, you have a complete chain of links starting from your boundary composition all the way through your test material. 
So if we uh, think about how this looks in your Euclid dossier, you have on the left hand side the compositions that you have created as we uh, showed in the earlier slide. And you have on the right hand side the assessment entity uh, that you have created under Euclid section 1.10. And you can see you are creating already a link between the boundary composition that you report in uh, Euclid section 1.2 to the assessment entity set with the corresponding name in Euclid section 1.10. Now, if you have created your assessment entity, uh, you have a number of different assessment entities. You can link uh, the uh, specific uh, composition, the specific uh, assessment entities that you have created to the endpoint summaries for each endpoint. So here you see uh, the assessment entity set for C20 through 40 is linked to the endpoint summary for the endpoint on repeated dose uh, toxicity. And then uh, from the endpoint summary on repeated do dose toxicity, you can create uh, there a link, as you see on the image on the right hand side, to uh, the assessment entity composition. And uh, you can see in the you can create also a link to the endpoint uh, summary as you see in the in the bottom uh, of that image. Furthermore, continuing with that, you can create a link from the assessment entity uh, composition to the endpoint summaries uh, to the endpoint study records uh, in question. So, your uh, your endpoint uh, summary might be referring to a number of different uh, endpoint study records for that particular endpoint, and you can create an electronic link uh, between uh, those. So we can see then uh, the summary re uh, relates to these particular endpoint study records. Now, for the member dossier, uh, the situation is simpler. You just need to make sure that you use a consistent naming convention to link your uh, composition to those reported in the lead dossier. And this would look something like this. You have the particular lead, uh, legal entity uh, set reported in your Euclid section 1.2. And under the field uh, related composition that you can see on the image on the right hand side, you use the field called reference to related compositions and you create there uh, a link to the boundary composition set used uh, in uh, the lead dossier. So I will give uh, some further advice here on how to use uh, data from one uh, form to another and how to report that correctly in your Euclid dossier. So if you are using data from one uh, form to another form, and these are not part of the same set of nanoforms, then you should report these in your Euclid dossier as read across. And in order to do this correctly, you need to have the source uh, study record with the original study summary, and you also have to create a target record with the outcome and the read across justification that is specific to that endpoint and nanoform in question. You can find more information about this uh, on reporting uh, read across in Euclid uh, in the manual called How to Prepare Registration and Pboard uh, Dossiers. Now, in the specific case where you have a justification for a read across for multiple nanoforms and the justification is identical, you don't have to create necessarily multiple target study records. You can uh, have a single uh, target record, but you have to make sure you do the following. So first, uh, you have to make sure that the target record is linked very clearly to all the nanoforms or sets of nanoforms for which it is used. And you have to secondly make sure that the justification that you use specifically mentions 
all the nanoforms covered by that justification. Now, another important piece of advice uh, is to make sure that you characterize your test material appropriately. So it is important that you have a good characterization of your test material to make sure that the information requirements are covered and to demonstrate that the data you have is relevant for either the nanoform in question or the set of nanoforms addressed by that particular piece of information. And in order to make sure that you characterize your test material properly, you need to make sure that in addition to the information on chemical composition of the test material, you should at a minimum report in your Euclid dossier uh, for each uh, study summary and for each testing proposal information on the following. So one, you have to report information on the form of the test material. You should give details on the test material itself, and you can use the available text templates in Euclid. And then if needed, you can also report confidential details of the test material uh, in question. There are ways in Euclid where you can report information on uh, the test material that you have. So Euclid has a section 4.28 that contains endpoint study records to report study summaries for certain physical chemical properties of nanoforms. Now only section 4.28.8 on dustiness is an information requirement in uh, uh, the current reach annexes for nanoforms. And only this particular uh, uh, point is included in the completeness check from section 4.28. You should not confuse the information that is reported in Euclid section 4.28 with the characteristics that are reported in Euclid section 1.2. So you should use section 1.2 of the dossiers for reporting the Annex 6 information requirements. And these refer to the registered compositions and forms of the substance. And this is obligatory, this is required for each particular register. Sections four through seven, including section 4.28, are for reporting the Annex 7 through 10 information requirements and can be used to capture tests done on a particular test material sample. If you have uh, done physical chemical studies on particular test materials to characterize those uh, uh, for the information requirements in Annexes 7 through 10, then you can use uh, uh, the section 4.28 of Euclid to report study summaries of those particular physical chemical characteristics as complementary information to the test material information uh, for the particular endpoint. Now, I'll come to some important advice uh, in this slide on opt-outs for the Annex 7 through 10 information requirements. So first, for nanoforms, you can opt out and you, uh, you can opt out for one or several endpoints, provided that you give a justification in accordance with Article 11.3. And this justification is checked manually uh, by ECHM. For sets of nanoforms, Opting out can only be done for all uh, endpoints uh, and the related assessments. And this is because the concept of set of nanoform, the exception to register nanoforms using a set of similar nanoforms, relies on the idea that the hazard and exposure and risk assessment of the nanoforms can be done uh, jointly. So uh, it makes no sense to opt out for only individual endpoints if you have a set of nanoforms that should have the same uh, hazard 
the same exposure and the same risk assessment. Now I'll pivot from here and give you some information about what to do uh, when you have uh, test guidelines that are currently under development and are needed for fulfilling information requirements. So we are aware that uh, for some of the uh, endpoints that are required under the annexes, there are test guidelines that are currently being developed to suit nanomaterials specifically. There is information on the availability of different test methods and on the development of test methods under the following page on the European Union Observatory for Nanomaterials. And it is important that you always keep in mind that before you consider doing a vertebrate animal testing, you need to make sure that uh, the use of adaptations based on either column two uh, of the annexes seven through 10 and Annex 11 have to be explored first. But now suppose you are in a situation where you have uh, an information requirement that cannot be met with the existing uh, data that you have or any of the adaptations that are possible and the test uh, methods for that, for nanomaterials for that particular endpoint are under development. If you are in that particular situation, then you should do the following. If the endpoint in question is covering information requirements of annexes 9 and 10, then you need to create a testing proposal and insert this in the relevant Euclid section. If the endpoint in question is covering annex 7 and 8 information requirements, then you can report in your dossier practical constraints uh, that prevent you from submitting the information with the commitment, and this is important, uh, a commitment to initiate testing as soon as the relevant guidelines are available. And we will monitor the use of this kind of approach uh, in the dossiers. If you are in this situation for Annex 7 or 8 information requirements, then you should do the following in your dossier. So in Euclid, uh, indicate first that the endpoint study record is a data waiving uh, record by selecting the field data waiving and select the value other justification. In the field uh, that is called justification for data waiving, uh, select only the value other, and in the text field next to it, you should type the exact following statement. You should type the, this information requirement is not addressed until the finalization of the relevant OECD test guideline for nanomaterials. Evidence that no other information exists to fulfill this requirement is provided below under attached justification. And after you have typed this, you should make sure that in the same endpoint study record in the field called attached justification, you attach the template that is found in the following page on the ECHA website. Now, we've come to uh, the end part of the advice uh, from uh, the dossiers that we have received so far. Nevertheless, we have uh, a number of other sources of support and advice for you that you should always keep in mind. So uh, we have already a manual called How to Prepare Registration and Pport Dossiers that was updated with uh, the Euclid Release 6.4 in October of 2019. You have in there the Annex 8 reporting information specific to nanoforms, and you have the related document information on manual verification and completeness check. And you can find it under the uh, manuals page on the ECHA website. In addition to that, we have a webinar recording that was done on the 12th of November, 2019. Uh, the presentations from that webinar and extensive Q&A is available 
in the following uh, page on the ECHA website. And in addition, there are guidance documents that were published on the 3rd of December 2019, uh, giving guidance for identification and naming of substances under REACH and CLP. Uh, and you have a specific appendix for nanoforms applicable to the guidance on registration and substance identification. And finally, you can get support from ECA experts by uh, contacting us through the page uh, listed in the slides. So we are coming to the end of this webinar and we really hope that you have found it useful, that you have got a lot of messages to take home, uh, to think about and to actually be able to help you to know what our expectations are. And our advice is really to get active, to try to uh, submit and, and complete uh, the updates as soon as possible if you haven't already done so. If you have a completeness check pending, please reach out to us. We are here to help out, to see what we can do, to seek solutions within the existing framework we have in front of us. Uh, we also encourage you to, to familiarize yourself with the guidances and support materials that we have already on our website, such as the guidance for nanoforms and sets of nanoforms and the Euclid manuals and instructions. And again, I, I think it's a message that I will repeat because it's important. We are here. We are equally interested to get this successful implementation of REACH for nanomaterials and we are here to support you. And not just ECA, but also member states are, able, are available to answer questions through national help desks and so on. So please use all of this support that is available to uh, guide you on what is actually needed to be do, done. Um, there are, like I said, there are guidances out there. We have the nanoforms and sets of nanoform guidance. There is also a further development on the test guidelines that we are following closely from ECA. And it's really a key priority for us to enable a successful implementation of the new information requirements for nanos. We also are aware of not all of them are available at this point in time, but also here we are able, we are here we are we are happy and keen to discuss with you on specific cases where test guidelines are currently going through review and might still be needed to comply with with reach. And we also encourage you to have a look at uh, the nanomaterials that we have already identified on the EU market, um, at the overview that we have on the REACH information requirements and methods available. You can find all of this very useful information through the Nanomaterial Observatory and the link is on this slide. The material from this recording as the last one will be published and you can go back and watch it again. Uh, and there is a link on this slide and we will also make sure that it's uploaded on the website after the after this webinar is fin finalized or finished. And then just a quick reminder here about the questions and answers. We have colleagues backstage to help out with answering questions. Keep those questions coming. Don't miss this opportunity to, to ask those questions that you might have in mind on the content of, of these presentations that you have just seen, but also if there is anything in other in other areas or issues that you would like to raise in the context of nanomaterials, please use this opportunity, send us questions. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening to us and taking part of this webinar. Also, thanks to all colleagues um, who have been part of, of developing and, and preparing for this webinar. And um, even if this is the end of this webinar, we are still here and we are happy to help and, and support you further uh, to comply with, with this new information requirement. Thank you very much. <laughs>